Okay, so let me start with a quick overview of uh, the company, the kind of problems we're looking to solve, uh, and the kind of market dynamics that we see. To give you a brief overview of IP Infusion, uh, we're a company that's been around for 20 odd years. And as Tom mentioned, you've probably used some of our code uh, already in, in some of the equipment you've been using. Uh, we were a, a source code provider for about 20 odd years, uh, providing our source code and a very rich protocol stack to uh, a lot of OEM vendors. We've got some very big names that deploy our platforms, and they've been using that to build their own solutions on top of it. As a result of this, we have a really uh, unparalleled uh, control plane, uh, very, very rich uh, set of features. And uh, we also have thousands of customers, and as a result, tens of thousands of deployments. As a result of all of this experience, uh, we really have hardened carrier grade software that really builds on the principles of open networking. We have a, a range of network operating systems that can run on white boxes. You choose whatever technology uh, you're looking for, uh, and we run a networking software on top of that, and that enables a wide range of choices uh, and the ability to address multiple use cases. We've been really at the forefront of innovating uh, with routing uh, protocols and in fact, open source routing as well. So when we started out, uh, we were the key contributors to GNU Zebra OS, which later on evolved into Quagga. Uh, in fact, even Linux Foundation FRR and most recently uh, Danos operating system as well. And we've been very active uh, contributors and participants with um, with the with, uh, foundation such as Linux Foundation, Open Networking Foundation, and in fact, even the Telecom Info Project. Very recently, we, we were recognized by GigaOM, which is an independent organization. They were doing a radar to really map out the landscape of different network operating system vendors. Um, and it was a landscape of about 20 odd uh, vendors. And they chose us and really uh, positioned us as a key, a key, a key a, a, a clear leader, excuse me, uh, in this uh, entire space, mainly because of two factors. Uh, one is the breadth of our uh, portfolio and the kind of uh, the different types of use cases that we enable, and also the maturity of our solutions. Uh, so you can see here in this uh, radar over here, we're positioned close to the center, and the closer you are to the center, the better it is. And I also want to mention to you that AT&T uh, signed an exclusive agreement with us uh, back at the end of 2019. They selected us as a key uh, reseller and system integrator for the commercial version of Danos, what they refer to as Danos Viata Edition. This gives us the ability to take Danos Viata Edition uh, and uh, be able to resell that to uh, customers outside of AT&T, and we have full support as well. Okay, so let's talk about why we're here. 5G is really a transformative event today. And apart from uh, the kind of benefits it's going to deliver to uh, the mobile subscribers, uh, from a mobile operator perspective, it is completely transforming the radio access network and the transport networks as well. 5G obviously delivers massive bandwidth, and that means that you need to rethink your entire network in terms of being able to deliver that massive bandwidth all the way from the access to the core. So if you think about it, uh, when it comes to delivering 5G at the access uh, layer, uh, you've got many more cell sites, you've got massive amounts of bandwidth, which means you need a lot more new equipment that's going to be able to meet these uh, needs uh, from, from a bandwidth standpoint. And if you look at the access layer, then that poses uh, high demands on the aggregation layer all the way through the optical transport as well as into the core. Now, traditional ways of delivering networking uh, and your single vendor kind of solutions can no longer meet these uh, enormous challenges. The kind of solutions we're delivering at IP Infusion with disaggregation really address these pain points, the different use cases, and we're looking at how we can accelerate the uh, uh, adoption of 5G. Disaggregation is a trend that's been talked about for a while. Uh, it essentially involves the decoupling of hardware from software, but also the ability for software to be completely modularized, 
to build on cloud native architecture that allows you to deliver microservices in a containerized fashion and therefore really provide massive uh, extensibility uh, and scalability as well as elasticity. This disaggregation is now taking place, uh, you can see, in two areas at the access layer. So one is the open RAN initiatives that have been uh, that, that have been sparked off by various uh, community forums like TIP, uh, as well as the open RAN initiative and being adopted by a number of mobile operators. Uh, you can see from the estimates from Deloro that open RAN is expected to be about a $10 billion uh, investment by 2025, which is going to represent represent more than 10% of the total radio access networks. And DCSG, which is the disaggregated cell site gateway, is expected to be close to about 200 million by 2024, and about close to 20% of the entire cell, route, cell site route to market. So you can see that there's massive uh, 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 momentum behind disaggregation today. And as you look at this disaggregation at the access layer, what that means is, you need to uh, it you need it poses new demands on cell side routers and gateways aggregation equipment optical transport all the way into the core and we'll be showing you how we're addressing that in very tangible ways across all these different use cases uh, in the presentations that will follow now our strategy is simple. It's threefold as to how we're looking to accelerate disaggregation for these 5G transport networks. To start with, and, and, and we're really building this on the key requirements that we have from customers, as well as some of the key points, pain points. Now, disaggregation uh, delivers really the ability for uh, customers uh, to break the single vendor lock-in stronghold. It allows them to uh, roll out these services in a much quicker fashion uh, with a quicker time to revenue uh, and also be able to innovate at their own pace rather than the slower pace that you would typically get from traditional networking uh, choices. So how do we address that innovation piece? We are doing that by addressing diverse use cases all the way from the edge through the aggregation, trans optical transport into the data center. Our leadership in open routing delivers a platform that customers can start building innovative applications on top of. We're building intelligence into our, our uh, operating systems and our offerings that simplifies the operations, allows our customers to automate uh, their tasks and thereby deliver greater operational efficiency. We also have the ability for programmability, northbound interfaces that allow you to integrate into existing uh, orchestration networks and be able to manage the network from one end to the other, as well as be able to uh, deliver a service orchestration. The second thing we're looking to do, and this is something that customers tell us, is how do we simplify the entire journey of disaggregation? Do I need to stitch this whole thing together? Well, we try to solve that by A, providing an end-to-end -end solution. B, we have a broad ecosystem of technology partners as well as integration partners. So we help stitch all those elements together for our customers uh, so that they can deploy this really quickly. We also provide package solutions, hardware and software. Hardware with our technology partners, uh, integrated with our software delivered as a shrunk wrap package to our customers should they want to put this whole thing together. And that helps them with faster deployment and quicker time to revenue as well. A key pain point that customers talk about as far as disaggregation is concerned is how do I remove the risk? With the traditional vendors, I know exactly who to go to. I can call one person and take care of uh, whatever problems might come up. In a disaggregated um, a network with so many different fragments, how do I put the whole thing together? Who do I call? Well, we're addressing this in multiple ways. One is we have a seamless migration uh, to de-risk uh, the move adoption of uh, the move over to uh, disaggregated networks. We are able to provide a seamless migration from legacy networks to the next generation networks. You'll see in the presentations that follow exactly how we're doing this. The next thing we do is we provide a fully validated and a hardened carry grade solution, which includes both the hardware and the software. We don't just throw the software over the fence. We absolutely integrate that uh, and validate that with the hardware partners that we work with. And that gives our customers a, uh, a great deal of confidence uh, and reassurance that this is fully tested and fully validated. Moreover, we provide that single point of contact 
from a support perspective. We are at the forefront uh, for all uh, support issues for with the 24-7 uh, infrastructure. And we take on those troubleshooting calls, regardless of whether it is hardware, software, or an application running on top of it. We debug it. We hand it over and and divert to to uh, to to where the problem really is, and in that manner, we are able to provide the single point of contact and really de-risk the deployment uh, that that customers are looking to do with disaggregation. This is a view of the disaggregated uh, network solution from one end to the other that we deliver. On the access layer, we're delivering cross-hall solutions for uh, addressing open RAN as well as uh, to address wireless backhaul use cases. We are building in uh, intelligence both from an RF standpoint as well as integrating uh, microwave as well for wireless backhaul. We're looking to support private 5G. We provide uh, WAN overlay and traffic engineering features that provide for much greater operational efficiency. And we provide, provide programmability uh, and advanced telemetry for both automation and delivering insights. When you look at the aggregation layer, we're looking uh, at delivering disaggregate solutions that have massive uh, scale all the way up to 800 gigabits per second. We provide internetworking with existing legacy MPLS kind of networks. Tunable optics that allow you to reuse the same aggregation routers and achieve much greater reach uh, uh, and, and efficiency as well. And then if you look at our optical transport uh, network solutions, we have transponders uh, that uh, provide to customers with long range, high bandwidth with very low latency, uh, going all the way up to 800 gig gigabits per second in the future. And then as you follow the packet to the core, you've got edge computing, you've got different points of uh, presence that customers, our mobile operators have. And these all require internet working solutions. Sometimes they're as simple as um, spine leaf kind of topologies, uh, but they require a lot more features. And we deliver that uh, with the kind of solutions that, you've, that, that we have. And you'll be seeing this in the demonstrations that follow. This is a, a quick look at the entire ecosystem that we have of partners uh, that we strategically align with, all the way from technology partners that include silicon providers, uh, hardware partners who provide white boxes, system integrators who work with customers and have a 360 view of their network and are able to really uh, help with the integration into their own networks implementation. Then we have a range of channel partners as well uh, that provide us with, uh, that provide our customers with uh, fulfillment capabilities as well as global reach. In terms of deployments, we are very actively engaged with all of the different uh, community labs across the world with TIP, for example, uh, we are engaged in, in a lot of POCs as well as their community labs to help with the validation of our solutions. We work closely with TIP in terms of also contributing. Uh, we are a very strong contributing member. And then in their validation and deployment capabilities, I'm sorry, in the uh, uh, labs, we are very actively in, involved across the globe. Uh, this is just a quick look of that, uh, at that. And also very importantly, I'm happy to talk to you about the fact that we are in production today with our disaggregated networks. With 5G, uh, we have an active deployment uh, in production with Asia Pacific Telecom in uh, Taiwan. Uh, with optical transport networks, we have Mundo Pacifico in Latin America. We have VTS in Africa uh, that are deploying our optical transport solutions with a completely disaggregated approach to be able to provide uh, high bandwidth to in, in very, very hard to reach places. Uh, and then we have customers that have been deploying us at cat, carrier ethernet, provider edge routers, and also for data center use cases. So that's just a quick look at all the different customers uh, that, that we have, and we'll be talking about that in some detail as well.